I have covered this in one of my weird musical videos, but now it's time to talk about the Powell photo. James Powell, Special Agent, 112th INTC Army Intelligence Group, uh, said, he, said that he took the Powell photo, and he wrote this memo, he said, on the day of the assassination, he said. Now, I'm not going to read it all, but I'll take out a few key points. He said he first, before this, took a photo at the intersection of Austin and Maine as the motorcade passed him by there. Then he ran to Dealey Plaza. He heard the shots. Somebody pointed at the building, and he took the Powell photo. Then he said after he went to the railroad yard, he went into the Texas School Book Depository and called his office. And then he called his office a second time. And then he says he was released from the Texas School Book Depository at 1.45 p.m. and returned to his office. And here, perhaps we are supposed to believe that that is Powell himself. In the Martin film, we have a man uh, apparently leaving the Texas School Book Depository building. At least he's walking away from it. And he's holding a camera in front of him as if he wants to say, here see my camera. And on January 3rd, 1964, apparently the FBI interviewed Powell by telephone, and he tells essentially the same story, but notice uh, as an indication of the quality of the investigation going on here that the Wallace Beard Company, as, uh, as Powell uh, described it in his memo of the 22nd, in his interview with the FBI, somehow becomes a beer company. Uh, that's the FBI for you. And on December 31st, 1963, as the FBI uh, notes in this January 2nd report, uh, Powell's photo was acquired by the FBI. And according to this scribbling, the original slide photograph was returned to James Powell on January 8, 1964. And in 1978, when the HSCA is doing its thing, we find a, a new part of the Powell story that he had not told before. He says that he took four other pictures, three at Love Field and one as the president's auto was several blocks prior to getting to the Texas School Book Depository. That would be at Austin and Maine. We've heard about that before in the documents. But now, in 1978, we hear for the first time that he was at Love Field taking photographs of the president. Also in this interview, he was asked, were you told what success the FBI had with your color slide? Yes, I was informed by an agent. The man in the window on the seventh floor was identified and interviewed. Well, there's no man in the window on the seventh floor in the Powell photo, but there is such a man in the Skaggs photo. That's Tom Allier, the photographer who was in the building after the shooting. So somehow, uh, apparently Powell and the FBI don't know the Powell photo from the Skaggs photo. Now, reading from Powell's ARRB interview, we're starting here at the story when Powell is trapped in the Texas School Book Depository. Now, Wilson Pate from your unit came. Page. Page, I'm sorry. Got you released. Did you, where did you go then? Did you go home or did you go back to your office? I'm pretty sure I went back to the office. I went to the office with him briefly because that was where I did the report. I wanted to I wanted to put that together while it was fresh in my mind, and I went home after that. Do you recall during the time that you were in Dealey Plaza, except for Wilson Page, did you see anyone? Did you recall seeing anyone else from the 112th? No. Okay. Did you recall a name? This would probably have been someone from law, local law enforcement named Jack Reville? Or Reville? Uh, that is interesting. I'll be again very candid with you. I don't recollect the name. Additional notes. 
In lunch conversation before taped interview, Mr. Powell stated that he did not recall a person assigned to Region 2 Dallas 112th INTC named Edward Coyle. On reviewing his own emergency notification roster from that unit, Mr. Powell noted that Coyle is listed as being the resident agent assigned to the Abilene office, a one-person substation of the Dallas office. He, su he suggested that this possibly explains why he has no clear recollection of Coyle, since, at least in July 1962, when the roster is dated, Coyle did not work in Dallas. However, Coyle did work in Dallas after July 1962 and before the assassination. So we know that, and we know that uh, Powell is not remembering somebody that he worked with here. And then we have this call report, which comes after that interview where Timothy Ray called Powell to follow up on recent meeting interview and particularly to inquire whether Powell had yet located his original slide photographs from Dallas. Powell said that he's now certain that they are at his ex-wife's house and that he expects to get them in the next couple of weeks. Ray reiterated the board's strongest, strong interest in acquiring them for the archives. Powell was cordial and cooperative and promised to comply, but he never did. And now we're going to the July 29, 1996 interview of Edward J. Coyle, that guy Powell doesn't remember. And he's talking about here, where I'm going to start at the top, uh, when they first heard about the assassination. And all of a sudden, the radio went blank, and it stayed blank for quite a while, and we didn't know what the hell had happened. And our telephone rang, and I can remember Steve Weiss picking up the telephone, and, and one of our agents was in the school book depository building, and he said that the president had been shot, and Steve Weiss liked to went berserk. Uh, do you recall who that agent was? No, I don't. Could it have been Sergeant James Powell? It might have been. Okay. I'm not sure, but anyhow, he asked us to bring a camera down there because he was going to take some pictures. I can remember one of the things that he said. He felt the shots that got Kennedy came from the grassy knoll because he saw a lot of people, a lot of skirmishing up there. Okay, so he asked us to get a camera down there. Now, we were only about five blocks from the school book depository building, but this time, all of this happening, let me tell you, the colonel told this kid he had to pick up the extension in his office. Our boss did. He told this kid to make damn sure that the president was shot before we passed this information to higher headquarters. Right. So this kid turned around and he hung up the telephone and he went and he talked to somebody and he called back and he told the colonel that definitely the president had been shot and he would like a camera brought down to him. So he's calling Powell, this kid. Well, we had to get a camera out of the supply room, we had to get film in it, and there was no sense in trying to drive down there, so we ran down the five blocks. And I got down to the school book depository building, and the guy from ATF that had been in the meeting with, with that morning was down there, and the police department had turned around and had set up a command post right there at the school book depository building. They turned the radios on, the motorcycles up loud, and they were handling everything from there. Right. I could see our guy in the building. I could not get to him. I could not get him out. Now at that time, Jack Revelle was the head of the intelligence section of the Dallas Police Department, and he was a very, very close, because of our working, we were close friends. Right. Jack Revelle was at the place where the luncheon was supposed to be, and no one was allowed in the school book depository building until he returned from where he was down at the luncheon site. Anyhow, Jack came back to the school book depository building, and as I started to go into the building, I got his attention. I said, Jack, I said, one of our agents is in the building. I'd like to get him out. And he said to me, which guy is it, Ed? And our guy was standing right in the doorway, and I said, it's that one right there. So he turned around, and he had somebody take down his name and phone number and address and crap, and he let him out of the building. Well, we stood around there listening to what was going on for a while, and then we went back to our office. So, Coyle, the guy that Powell doesn't remember, and Jack Reville, the guy that Powell doesn't remember, are the two guys who got him out of the Texas School Book Depository. 
Let me ask another question. The person who called you from the school book depository, the agent from the 112th, and asked for a camera, do you know whether he already had a personal camera in his possession or not? I don't think so. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think he did. And if he did, why does he want another one? Well, Timothy Ray obviously understands the significance of this, but he's just asking questions, he's not investigating. So I think the most reasonable explanation of this is that Powell did not have a camera, and therefore he could not have taken the Powell photo. But Robert Jackson did have a camera. In fact, he had two cameras. He said that one of them was empty, the one with the telephoto lens was empty, but he had this other camera that had film in it. And Bob Jackson apparently told Richard Sprague that he had taken a photo coming down Houston Street. But Bob Jackson's story is that he didn't take a single photograph in Dilly Plaza. And this is a, a Sheriff's Department document here where it says Bob Jackson, Times Herald photo, who is now at Parkland Hospital, is reported to have seen the rifle and the man that fired the shots as the shots were fired. This information from Sergeant W.G. Jennings. So that means, apparently, that Bob Jackson talked to Sergeant W.G. Jennings before he left for Parkland Hospital. And if we look at the radio traffic, Jennings at 1242 is not yet in Dilly Plaza. He's en route from Industrial and Commerce. So Jackson could not have spoken to him before 1242. So that means that Jackson was in Dilly Plaza for more than 12 minutes and he did not take a single photograph. The guy who took this photograph was in Dealey Plaza after the president was shot. He was there for more than 12 minutes and he did not take a single photograph. I don't believe that. So I think that Jackson took this photo, the Powell photo, while he was still in the car and that it was credited to Powell in order to support the story that he had a camera with him when he went to Dealey Plaza, when he really did not have a camera. Now Powell said that before the president was shot, he was at Austin and Maine, and the motorca motorcade went by there and he took a photo, he said, and after that he ran to Dealey Plaza. And to judge by Channel 2 Dallas Police Radio transmissions, the president would have passed Powell's position about halfway between the 1228 minute, about 1228 and 30 seconds around there. And at about this time on the Channel 1 Dallas Police radio frequency, you can hear this. I think that what is spoken here is, alas, the past president. And I think this is a message uh, used to inform from one conspirator to another, used to inform them that the, the president is at a particular location at this time along the motorcade route. And I speculate that that is James Powell, actually, at the intersection of Austin and Maine, and that he is not talking into a camera, that he's talking into a radio, that he has a walkie-talkie with him, and that when he runs to Dealey Plaza, he's running with a walkie-talkie in his hands. And uh, after he finds out the president was shot, which I think was a surprise to him, I don't think he was expecting that, he decided he didn't want to be seen with a walkie-talkie in his hands, and so he wanted a camera, so that if anything had been seen in his hands, or if he had been photographed, uh, he would be able to say, no, 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 that's not a walkie-talkie, that was my camera. So the cover-up gave him credit for Jackson's photo in order to support his camera story, and that Jackson was compensated by being put in position to take his career-defining photo of Oswald being shot, and that's why he went along with it, because Jackson made out really well with that arrangement. I don't think Jackson knew beforehand what was going on, though I think probably he came to realize afterwards. So the Powell photo actually was taken by Robert Jackson. 